Same Hi guys. Um, so I'm Miss Wang's older sister, Madison, um, and this is my harp. Um, as you can see, the harp has um, many strings. So this is a concert grand harp. Um, so I have one, two, three, I have six and a half octaves um, available to me. And you can think of these strings as being like the white keys on a piano. Um, up at the top of my harp, you can see there are all of these little levers um, that will move when I move the pedals. So while I'm playing, um, I'm playing with my hands and my feet at the same time. Inside the harp, there are um, a whole bunch of gears that are designed to change um, the pitch of each string um, as I'm moving the pedals. So as you can see, if I move my pedal, you don't really see anything moving um, underneath um, in these gears. But when you look at the levers, you can see as I'm moving the pedal that the lever is rotating you see this one here so there's two levers and as I'm moving my pedal right now it's flat then if I make it natural the top lever moves to shorten the string and if I make it sharp both levers move um, to shorten the string as much as possible so I'll show you the back of my harp you can see um, inside each string is tied underneath the soundboard. Um, so there's a special process that I have to go through um, in order to string my harp. Uh, I tune my harp with a tuning key um, that fits onto each individual string. Um, and I have to use a tuner for every string, um, just the same way that you tune um, the four or five strings on your instruments. Um, but it takes me a lot longer. I'll show you the pedals at the bottom of my heart. Um, you can see that the pedals have three different positions. So if they are all the way at the top, the pedals are flat. If I move them into the middle position, then that note is natural. And if I move it all the way to the bottom, that note is sharp. So there is one pedal for each note um, in the scale. So my pedals are, let's see if I can, um, so this is B, E, A, D, F, C, G. I don't know why they're in that order. That's just how they are. Underneath my harp, Hey Taylor, yeah. do you come and be my camera woman? So take this and if you lower it down, I'm gonna show them what's underneath. You can see that the pedals go down a little bit more, point it down. The pedals connect to a series of gears underneath the harp. So as I'm shifting, the gears are moving and inside the column of my harp, here, um, inside the column of my harp, which is um, this straight piece here, there are actually seven thin rods um, that run from the bottom of the harp all the way up and connect to all the gears at the top. The pedals um, underneath are all held in place with a really big um, spring and harps um, technically can last for hundreds of years, but as they start to get older, um, the soundboard will separate from the bass and that big spring um, can actually pretty much make the harp explode. Um, one time at Blue Lake Fine Arts Camp, um, a harp spring bust through the stage. It was kind of epic. Um, this part of the harp is called the um, neck of the harp. So it is actually its weakest point. Um, this brass piece here is holding um, this curved piece of wood to the soundboard. Um, and this is what rests on my shoulder while I'm playing. Now, you've probably seen a lot of pictures of harps um, where 
the harpist is portrayed like this so that you can see the, the harp there and you can see the harpist. But the harp is always played so that the neck um, goes on your right shoulder. Um, so if you ever see anyone playing the harp on their left shoulder, they're just nuts. So um, I'm going to play a song for you. Um, it's pretty short, but this song in particular uses a lot of the different types of special sound effects that I'm able to create um, with my strings. So some of the things that you can watch and listen for um, are glissandos. Um, a glissando sounds like this. Um, I create in this song a couple harmonics. something that you can do with your instruments as well. Um, and then there are some very unusual things um, that I do in this piece, uh, such as playing with my fingernails um, and muting the strings. Um, this piece was composed um, by Carlos Salvedo, uh, who is one of the most well-known composers um, for harp solo pieces. Um, he pretty much revolutionized the harp um, at the turn of the early 20th century. Before that time, a lot of composers hated the harp um, because they just didn't really know what to do with it. Um, but Salzado actually happened to be on a ship for a long time um, with the composer Maurice Ravel. Um, and he and Ravel worked together to come up with um, brand new methods of playing the harp, um, which made the harp more easily incorporated into orchestra pieces throughout the 20th century. So this song is called Chanson de la Nuit, um, which translates from French to be song in the night.
I'll show you what the sheet music looks like. Hopefully you enjoyed that. So this is actually a key um, that shows me what all of these different um, annotations in the music stand for. Um, so you can see there's this little half moon that tells me to play with my fingernails. Um, there's a gushing chord, um, is what he calls it, which is just a, a quick glissando. Um, these alien chords are quick little glissandos. This little wave motion tells me that I should be playing by the soundboard, um, which makes a kind of muted sound. At the start of most heart pieces, there's a pedal diagram that shows me how to adjust my pedals before I begin playing um, so that I'm in the correct key. Um, as you can see, I can play in some pretty interesting key signatures. Throughout this piece, there, um, as you can see, is a lot of annotations specifically about the volume of the piece, um, different accidentals. Um, I think that the sheet music can look a little crazy um, if you're not used to playing this kind of thing. These little circles um, over top of the notes are actually harmonic indicators. Um, and then these are those little glissandos um, that you heard me playing. So this is also um, kind of an unusual marking. This was the knocking that I was doing on the soundboard. So hopefully, Hopefully you guys have enjoyed um, your harp tour and I will zoom with you in a couple of minutes to see if you've got any questions.